Well, hello, my name is Josh Erickson, and I'm one of the pastors of Park Ridge Presbyterian Church, and I want to welcome you to the special Christmas Eve service. We are so honored that you have decided to make this service a part of your Christmas celebration with your family and friends that you're able to spend this time with. And we really do hope that this service is a blessing to you, and we really do hope that this service helps your faith make a difference for you every day. We are so grateful that all of you have joined us, but if you are new or newer to Park Ridge Presbyterian Church, we'd love to be in touch with you and hear from you. We'd love you to get better connected, and the ways you can do that are to go to our website, parkridgepresby.org slash getconnected to learn about some next steps that you can take. Well, we're really excited about our Christmas Eve service. There'll be some times of special music to enjoy. There'll be some of the traditional Christmas readings. I'll be offering a Christmas message, and we'll have some time of prayer. Well, again, thank you for joining us, and thank you for making this Christmas celebration a part of your Christmas time with your friends and family. Enjoy. Well, let me introduce you to the Merced family. The Merceds are here to help us light our last Advent candle in our Advent wreath, the Christ candle. The Merceds have three young boys that are in our PRPC Kids ministry. We have Jackson, Harrison, and Monroe who are all here to play a special role in our Advent candle lighting. We have watched, we have waited in hope. We have watched, we have waited for peace. We have watched, we have waited in joy. We have watched, we have laid waited in love, for love. Now our our redemption draws near. Hear from the word of the Lord from Isaiah. For unto us a child has been born for us. A son is given. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually. And there shall be endless peace. Emmanuel, God with us, with eyes open, hearts softened, minds listening, and spirits full, we rejoice that you interrupt what we have, have in mind in order to bring into being something more than we dare imagine. May your love come down tonight as it has in nights past. Amen. Amen.
Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. Let's listen for God's word. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppression, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given for us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness for this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Let's listen for God's word. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee, Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they had made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Amen. Well, we have faced one of the most complex, confusing, confounding, and one of the most costly years uh, that any of us have ever seen, and certainly one of the most uh, confusing and costly years in human history. 
You know it's been that way when we go back in history and draw parallels to times like World War I and II and the Great Depression to get a sense of how things have been going for us. And like all of those moments in history, we then too now have to find a way forward into the future. We recognize that there are some people that won't be going with us into the future because of how costly this pandemic in this year has been. But for most of us, we are going to go forward into the future because time is relentless and it keeps moving us forward. So it's not a question so much of if we are going to go forward, but how are we going to go forward? And how will we prevail against what feels like so much despair in our world today? How can we find our way into the future that God wants for us? Now, we're not the first group of people to face this kind of despair in our lives. And looking back on the pages of history, there was a group of prisoners of war that were facing a very steep climb of despair as well. These were the prisoners of war at the then— these were the prisoners of war at what would become known as the Hanoi Hilton in North Vietnam during the Vietnam War. Perhaps the most famous of the prisoners of that day was the future Senator John McCain. But at the time, they were led by Admiral Stockdale. Now, at the time they were prisoners, he was Commander Stockdale. And when you're a prisoner of war, the chain of command still exists. And they made it through this ordeal as prisoners of war, facing torture and starvation. Much after the fact, Admiral Stockdale was asked, how was it that some of the people could make it through and some could not? And he said that there were two things that went into the way that some people were able to make it and the reasons that others could not. And the first of which is that they would confront the brutal facts. The people that made it through that time confronted the brutal facts that they were facing. And there was another thing that they did as well, which was to retain faith that they would prevail in the end. Admiral Stockdale shared these things as the way that some of them made it, the way they were to hold these things in tension, the way that these things are paradoxical even. But these were the ways that those men then were able to make it forward and have the hope that they needed that they would prevail. Now, the same thing is similar and true for us today when we face our future. We are confronted with the brutal facts of our day and the challenges that we're facing. And the reality is we don't need help recognizing what the brutal facts are. The implications of what we've gone through and the way it'll change us in the future, those are things that we will unpack in the decades to come. But what we do need help with is hanging on to our faith that we can prevail in times like this because of how challenging of the circumstances we have found ourselves in. And it's into that very need, that very need, that the Christmas story comes to remind us that we will prevail. And not just that we will prevail, but that God has prevailed already. Because of Christmas, we can dare to hope that God is with us. Now, it's because of Christmas that we can dare to hope first that God is indeed with us that God has not abandoned us. Because at that first Christmas, God entered into human history to remind us that God has been, God is, and God will always be with us. There were circumstances then and circumstances now that people look to and say, maybe God isn't with us. But Christmas reminds us that God will always be with us. And it's because of Christmas, we can dare to hope that God is with us. Now, it's also because of Christmas that we can dare to hope that God has redeemed. Because of Christmas, we can dare to hope that what the angel told Mary when she heard that she was going to be the mother of the Christ was going to be true, that Jesus would come and he would redeem the world of their sins. Mary had to wait to see the way that that would work out, but eventually Jesus would make his way to the cross and he would indeed be the redemption of a sin and the defeat of death. And it's because of Christmas that we can dare to hope that God has redeemed. But it's not just about what God has done. It's also about what God has done as well through us. Because the promise of Christmas is also the promise of the hope of the redemption brought by people. Because God has not just done something through Jesus, but God is doing something through all of us that every time you or I or the people in our lives around the world do something redemptive, that shows people that they can have faith that we will prevail. That shows us that we can have faith that God has prevailed, and it shows us that we can have faith 
that God is with us when we go forward into the future as well. So because of Christmas, we can dare to hope that God has redeemed, redeemed us and redeemed the world and then has sent us to be redemptive people throughout all of our lives. It's because of Christmas that we can dare to hope that these things are true. It's because of Christmas we can dare to hope that God is with us and God has not abandoned us, that there's nothing that we have faced or we will face on our own. It's also because of Christmas we can believe that God has redeemed the past, that God has redeemed the present, and that God will redeem the future as well. It's because of Christmas that we can dare to hope all these things are true. And it's in the midst of when we face the despair that we can hold on to these things that we can remember that God is with us, that God has redeemed us, and that God has a bright hope for our future and a bright hope for all of us as we go forward. It's because of Christmas we can dare to believe that all these things are true. Amen. Well, we want to take a moment tonight to say thank you to all of you who have supported Park Ridge Presbyterian Church throughout this past year. And we want to say thank you to all of you who will support Park Ridge Presbyterian in the years to come. Whether it's been the gift of time, talent, or treasure, we thank you for the ways in which you've supported this church, supported our mission, and our ministry. We do hope that you will consider giving to Park Ridge Presbyterian as you feel led. But most importantly, we want to say thank you for allowing us to offer this service to you to be a blessing in your life. And now I'd like you to join me in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this time that you have given to us to remember the great hope you have given to us. To remember the promises we hear in the Christmas story that we might dare to hope that you are with us now and always and that you have indeed redeemed us. God, we ask that you help us to remember these things are true in our lives so that we can prevail against the despair and the darkness, knowing that you have already won those battles for us. Gracious God, we ask that you help us to share your love with one and all at this time. Holy God, we ask that you continue to help us show love to those who continue to struggle, whether in the midst of the pandemic or whether from the isolation or mental illness or whatever struggle they might be having. Help us, God, to be there with and for them in this time. Gracious God, we thank you that you have blessed us with this chance to gather in this way and in your name. And as we go into the rest of our Christmas celebrations, we indeed ask that your Holy Spirit be present to us now and always so that we might be faithful in all that we do. We pray this in your Son's holy name. Amen. Well, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light of Christ shines throughout all the world, and the darkness will never overcome it. Tonight, we share the light of Christ with one another. Under ordinary circumstances, we might be together to share the candlelight of Christ with one another, and so tonight, we do so symbolically share the light of Christ. Indeed, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light that shines in the darkness. The darkness that will never overcome it is the darkness that God has prevailed over. So let us now share the light of Christ with one another now and always. For the longest time, people walked in darkness. But at the right time, in the fullness of time, God sent Jesus into the world to bring the light of Christ to the whole world. Let us celebrate the gift of God's light, the light of Christ, for one and all. Amen.
Well, thank you for joining us for this Christmas Eve service. We really do hope that this service has been a blessing to you and anyone you might share it with. We do pray that this service is a blessing to you and helps your faith to make a difference for you every day. We do hope as you go into the rest of your Christmas celebration as well that you will receive this blessing. We pray now that the love of God and the peace of Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you, with all those whom you love, and all those who feel no love. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.